When I started playing with him, I had this, I had this really fast connection with him, and I wanted to do the right thing, and I, I really cared deeply about him. He cared about me too. It was like, in one way, he took care of me, and in, and in another way, I tried to take care of him. His guitar playing, I've always looked at it, was a reflection of what he was as a human being. And um, if you knew him as a person, you wouldn't be surprised to, to hear that kind of music come out of him. I mean, he was a very humble person, at the same time real strong. And um, as long as I knew him, that's one thing, one reason we got along so well is uh, we had this concern for spirituality. Of course, we went the long way around finding it, but <laughs> nonetheless, we did have that. And he was the kind of person, I never, he never wanted to hurt anyone. And uh, it's real hard to put in words. I just wish people could have really known Stevie, because to me, it was more beautiful than the music, which is, you know, it's hard to top. But um, he was like a brother to me. It was the greatest period of my life. We made great music. We did all kinds of incredible things together. We went from the poorest existence. We didn't hardly have enough money to eat, keep our gas on, and our places that we lived to traveling all over the place, you know, flying in jets and going all over the world and... But more importantly, that was just kind of the extreme of that, so this kind of gives you the, the whole trip of it. The music was always, and the spirit of the music was never any different, which was, that's what we did it for. Nothing else really mattered. Steve and Tommy Chris were a wonderful trio, wonderful, wonderful trio, uh, very energetic, and I'd be surprised that they really wanted to add a keyboard. You know, I didn't think they needed, needed anything. I thought they were very complete just as themselves, so I was real pleased to be a part of that. They seemed to just like what I brought to the table, and uh, you know, there wasn't any question that I was liking what they were doing. So it was, uh, it was a wild scene over there, just a uh, you know, little, little new energy and kind of uh, sparking what was already there. So I felt like I'd, I'd uh, help them, and uh, it was sure a pleasure for me to do it. It was a dream come true uh, for me. I loved it. I felt like I was the luckiest guy in the world to be able to, to be able to be there and be a part of it. I think about him every day. I think about him many times every day. He's as big a part of my life now as he was then in a way because it's a, it's a spiritual thing. I mean, there's things that we had and the way that we thought about things that have never changed. I think it's interesting, his tragic passing, and I think, I don't know if it's our this culture that we live in, it does a certain thing to somebody that turns them into something different. Um, but it's, he still seems like Brady to me. <laughs> it was a nickname that we had for him. But Stevie was Stevie, and he's still the same Stevie to me. I remember one night, I'll never forget this. This was about six months before we finally hit bottom, that's what we call it, in the program of recovery. Uh, we both got down on our knees in this hotel room. We were praying, you know, please, God, help us stop this, you know, because we, we knew we were in some deep trouble. We knew that, but we couldn't stop. And we said this real deep prayer. And we got up, went over there, did some more cocaine, drank some more booze, but the thing is, the prayer was answered, you know. It came six months later, and we both got clean and sober together, and it was like walking out of a cesspool out into the sunshine, you know, on a beautiful day. The last night in Alpine Valley, the shows were over, and everything was winding down, and he and I sat backstage for like a half an hour. It was a really nice time, too, because it was... Everything was really, really relaxed. It wasn't hectic like, you know, things that surround shows of that magnitude can be. And um, we talked about families. We talked about the next record that we were looking to make in the future and 
talked about all kinds of things. It was real, a really nice talk. He said, I, I got to go. I, um, I said, go, where are you going? He said, well, I'm, I'm going to go back to Chicago. I said, well, why? He said, well, I'm going to go back and call. This is a girlfriend. He's going to go call the girlfriend. I said, well, I said, I got phones here. He said, he said no, I, I got to go. I said, well, um, I'll see you back in Chicago. He said, all right. He goes, I love you. I said, I love you too. And he left and that was the last time I saw him. It was, that was always strange to me that he left. I, I remember him in so many different ways. And yeah, I still miss him a lot. But I've, you know, I've learned I've learned I've had, you know, to go on with my life. I've had to do that. I know that's what he'd want. And for a while it was real hard to do that because playing with him was like... Like I've been asked before, you know, what was the, the best time you ever had with Stevie? And the only honest answer I can give is the whole ten years that I played with him. So, um, wherever you're at, little brother, I love you. I had this dream. Tommy and myself were in this room. And it, well, the room was the room that I had at the Austin Rehearsal Complex, all white. There was nothing on the walls in this, in this dream. And we were, he and I were there playing, just bass and drums, and we were playing along playing along and then all of a sudden there was like this sense of something and I looked over towards the door and the door cracked open and Stevie's head came around the corner and the awareness was is that he shouldn't have been there I was like what what are you doing here what are you doing here you're you're back what you can't be here what's what's going on and he said oh I've got this little this little bottle he goes I made this little potion so whenever I left, if I wanted to come back, I could just drink this and I could come back. And we're like, God, this is great. I mean, it was just like, I couldn't believe this. Anyway, he came in as he came around the door. He had his guitar with him and he walked over and he just like plugged into something. I don't even remember what it was. I don't even know if there was an amp in the dream, but he plugged in and we, the three of us just played. It was like this incredible music that we made. I mean, I wish I, <laughs> I mean, it sounds so I wish I could have recorded it, but... It was just this incredible jam, and we played, and we played. It was like we were just, like, floating. And then all of a sudden, he kind of just fell off from it. And he held the guitar down at his side like that, and he started walking towards the door. I said, where are you going? I said, where are you going? He said, my time's up. He goes, I've got to go. And he walked out the door, and the door closed, and I woke up. <laughs>